Hi, it's Ed here from Logtel on uh, IndieGoonie.com. Yeah, it's good. I tell this really badly every time I try to explain it, but it does make sense in my head. The long tail is a theory to developed by a guy called Chris Anderson, and I think he does like TED Talks and things like that. And uh, the, the way I or think of it in terms of music is the long tail, if you look at a graph, like, you know, whatever, like the million in terms of music, you got your mainstream, your Adele's, Taylor Swift's, and everything on top of it. So they're like, they're, you know, few and far between, but they sell 10 million records. Whatever. But then the tail of it goes down here, right? and that's me. That's always kind of signified like independent bands in the underground or something like that. So when you stack up the tail beside the big one, it totally it's way bigger. Do you know what I mean? And it's for me, it's uh, it just kind of seems like the underground taking hold of the independent, like doing their thing. The independent bands or indie bands kind of as one, kind of as a community. Do you know what I mean? So it's very pretty socialist in my thinking, apparently. <laughs> um, we've all been playing music in uh, various different bands and various different guises for a long time, for years. And, uh, like Ronan, our drummer, he's, um, he's a multi-instrumentalist as well. He, 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 he used to have his own band. He used to play, play guitar and sing songs and blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah. Steve was in a lot of bands, I've been in a lot of bands. And we played with a girl called uh, the Seaver. The Seaver is a double-based uh, singer-songwriter, which is fantastic. And um, when Longtail came about, uh, I just asked the boys, the boys if they come along, have a live shows and get it together. And lo and behold, that's just that's what it became. So, yeah. We got to know each other through that. Um, right, so the, the EP was recorded in Westland Studios primarily and uh, Station Studios in Bob Rigan. And the, the process, like when I see the long tail uh, uh, recordings, I go in and do everything in a day basically. So each song is recorded in a day by myself and an engineer. John O'Kelly does everything on the, on the EP, the Time EP. So in the morning we'd go in, I would lay down drums and the bass and the guitars. And, acoustic guitars and then vocals, back and vocals and pianos and get it all done all day. So, um, that, like that's kind of the recording process of it. The songs were written over the course of maybe two or three years. And what, what kind of shows through, and I only kind of noticed this afterwards as well, is that they've all got, the songs have a real kind of, um, kind of like a live forever by Oasis, that kind of real positive go for it. Can I swear? I don't know if I'm going to swear, I'm probably going <laughs> to. That kind of, you know, just fucking go for it, man. It's yours. It's your life, go out and live it. So, the writing of each song, at some point that seems to show up in it, you know? Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the inspiration of it. But like, my biggest influence is musically be the Beatles and Nirvana. And I think it kind of shines through and kind of sounds a bit like the Food Fighters, I suppose. Which is, there you go. Well, um, not to sound selfish, but I'm, like the songs aren't written for anybody, do you know what I mean? So, it's kind of, it's all what I'm thinking or what, all what I'm feeling at the time. And, um, so, yeah, no, it, it was never written with that goal in mind, it just kind of is what it is, it just became that way, so, yeah, nearly every chorus has some kind of, come on, fucking do it, it's yours, you own this, you know what I mean? Uh, Your Time Itself, the, the single, um, that comes back to a, like a saying that my grandfather used, he was a painter, he's uh, long dead now, but he used to say, you got to live in your own time, right? And I've taken that really literally. I, some people think it means, you know, you know, take your time, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think of it like that. I think it means literally live in the present, you know, be present, just be part of life, be part of everything. And it's your time. You can take influence from the past and things like that, and that's great. But you gotta live in your time. You gotta work in, in your time, you know what I mean? And make, make life work for you, so you gotta go out and get it. So, yeah, that's where it goes from. So, yeah, I suppose it, it, does, it is all very positive without being, you know. Tony Robbins about it, you know, motivational stuff. But yeah. uh, they all kind of mean different things. So your time, I, do, I love the song, your time, I think it's, I really like that one. Um, our star is number three on the EP. That is, uh, that's actually a love song, which I'm, you know, as a rock and roller, I'm embarrassed to say what it is. Um, Better Way, number two on it. That's the oldest song on the record, so I kind of, I wrote that years ago, but like about six or seven years ago. So I kind of have a, a real, I kind of attach myself to that, and if anyone likes that song, I'm really happy. Do you know what I'm like, yeah, cool, I, I like it too, right? And then, more of the same, it's the four track on the EP, uh, EP and it's, that's kind of like my punk rock number, so. We're gonna play it tonight, and I like it because it just adds a, a messy kind of dynamic to the live show. If I had to pick a favorite, that would be uh, Our Star, number three. Uh, well, as I said, like the recording of the EP, each individual song was done 
per day. So like most bands would go in and if they're recording an album, they would you know block book a couple of weeks in the studio and they would go in and they would record, uh, you know, lay down the drums and bass a day by day by day. I, just, I didn't have that luxury because I was doing it all myself. So I couldn't re and I play drums like really heavy, kind of like Dave Grohl, Nirvana uh, influence, Winter Stone Age style. So if you're laying down a track like that on day one and then finish, you know, doing everything in one day, day two you're not really up to much, you know what I mean? So I had to sporadically do each song, so I, uh, one song would be done, I don't know, there would be weeks in the difference of each song, if you know what I mean? So, um, difficulties in recording it were just, basically just getting the, making it all sound like one cohesive uh, work, do you know what I mean? As if we, it was all in the studio at one time. Um, but I th you know, that's not, that wasn't even up to me, that was like the, my uh, mixer and engineer and producers and, and uh, Fergal Davis who mastered it made it sound really big, so I don't know, with any of the big problems or uh, issues with it, they took care of it. So. <laughs> yeah. It sounds way more raw, um, which I really like, uh, so, because on the record, I, like, there's a lot going on on the records, you know, they're big, strong uh, songs, I think, you know, big choruses and stuff. And lots of instrumentation, but live it were a three piece, you know, so it's guitar, vocals, uh, bass, uh, drums, backing vocals from all the lads. So it's way more stripped back, but at the same time, there's a real energy to it, you know. So, hence that song, more the same, I was talking about. I, I love having that in the set because shit can go wrong with that song, you know. I mean, it can really, it can be a fucking disaster sometimes, but it's okay, that's part of the live event, you know. I don't, yeah, I mean, it comes across. I, th I hope it comes across best because it's like really meaning, you know, it's, it's rock music the way it's supposed to be, you know. You know, earning your stripes and all that stuff, getting out there and, and playing and uh, doing it independently and really, you know, working for it. And I like that, I really, I dig that, you know. You don't want to release one song and then hope it's, you know, it's ever handed to you. So, uh, I d yeah, they're two different animals. On the record, there's loads going on and, and I'm really proud of that. I, I, I love the records, but live is a way way more you kind of had to be there experience you know so yeah li live is a lot of fun oh with long tail i think everyone's getting a bit heavier to be honest with you I mean, from doing the live shows with the with the lads with steve and ron because that notion because everything is so kind of raw and balls to the walls and just go for it uh, everything's getting a bit more a lot more distortion you know a bit more gain because like when when i write the songs they're kind of written on acoustic guitar right now and find melodies and all the rest and i kind of know where it's going in the song but then the live show just creates this kind of, oh shit, yeah, we can, yeah, we can do this, and it could be you know, a much bigger kind of event live. So um, yeah, I think we're probably getting heavier, but uh, I don't know if the songwriting is maturing or anything. Then it's probably devolving, which would be fucking good fun. Um, yeah, I mean, live they do for sure. Yeah, and that's to do with their musicianship, really, because like, um, when I'm laying down the bass, I don't, like, I don't, I get the job done, you know what I mean? Kind of root notes. And, and uh, whatever needs to, to be in it, but Steve's a really excellent bass player, like really, really good. So he can he can play around with it and um, and make the songs a bit more interesting. You know what I mean? And Ronan as well, like he's just a fantastic all round uh, musician. So the songs become a bit more in depth, if that makes any sense. But in terms of the writing, I don't really know. We'll see. Whatever the next song I write is, we'll see that. Yeah, go on a session. Loads of younger ones, you know. Uh, I don't know, play football a bit. We used to play a lot of uh, like AstroTurf and indoor soccer and stuff like that. I like sports and I love snooker. I'm like the only person in the world who likes snooker. I don't give a shit, I love it. Ronnie O'Sullivan's a legend. So um, yeah, I don't know, just hang out with the lads, go for a pint and play pill. That's, just, that's kind of what I like to do when I'm not on stage or falling off stage probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, well I mean, to quote Doug Stano, but I'm, I'm not sure you should take advice from anybody. Uh, because they're just trying to teach you to be more like them, as he says. But uh, I would say, <coughs> mean what you play, most importantly. Mean what you play, get stuck in. I mean, like I picked up a guitar from here in Nirvana for the first time when I was like 11 years old, or 12 or something like that. And it meant the world to me. And I had nothing to do with hype, it had nothing to do with, you know, you gotta hear this band or anything like that. It just, it, it was on, and it was like, whoa, that's the most powerful thing I've ever heard. And I got into music like that. It's, it's cliche, but I, I don't care, that's exactly what happened. Um, and I think, for me, I think people kind of need that. I think they need that kind of moment of, holy shit, I, okay, I, this is what I do now. I want to be a musician, you know, or what, I want to 
I want to be able to, to express myself like like that or, or whatever whatever it draws you. Um, so I, th I really think if you're not if you're just phoning it in, okay, what are you doing for? Do you know what I mean? What are you doing for? Go be an accountant or whatever. You're not meant to be. Play, you're certainly not meant to be playing rock music. If you're just phoning it in. So uh, I would say really mean what you play. And it doesn't mean anyone else has to like it as long as you like it. You know what I mean? Get up and play and see what happens. And a big point I. I'd, I'd like to think is becoming more prevalent is don't look at other bands as your competition. They're your contemporaries. Okay, other bands and other musicians are your contemporaries. They're not your competition. I think if everyone thought like that, it'd be a nice, friendly place to be. Uh, we're uh, most likely going to uh, be touring around Ireland, um, kind of promote the EP. We're shooting a video for that song, Our Star is Not About. That's the cool point. Some rock and a sound check right there. Um, yeah, so tour uh, video for our star and that's